Thank you, Lord God. Though this man has performed and sung with people all over the world and produced great music himself, how grateful we are that he loves you and that you are first in his life. And thank you for how he blessed us by coming here today and pouring into us. We love him and we thank him, God. And now teach us your word. Give us clarity of thought, continuity of thinking, accuracy of the text. Help your servant to teach in such a way that even a child will be able to understand the wonderful truth that is given through Scripture. We praise you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you again, Frank, for coming. Can we give it up to him again and thank God for him? This was somewhat of a back-to-back -back, uh, trip for him to our region, given that he was just here with uh, our own brother Larry Monet Lee and the Sacramento Observer. He was there for their 60th anniversary gala and ministered and shared there. And then he was so gracious to come here. And the uh, Lord said the same. We're going to have him back for our 35th year anniversary this up and coming year. So we thank God for that as well. Are you ready for the word? Yes. We're going to jump right into it and see what the Lord has for us, beloved. Open your Bibles with me, if you will, please, to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We are continuing in our series of Faith Works, Working Our Faith. It is in conjunction with our theme for this year, Activating our purpose, activating our purpose that we have denoted the entire year of 2023, that God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And um, it's no accident that we would finish out our time of sharing teaching uh, this year on the subject of faith and the importance of faith being a part of our lives and living by faith, not faith as a formula, not faith as a formula, not we don't conjure here. We don't do conjuring. We are people who live by faith. It is real to us. It is real to us. Our lifestyle reflects faith in God's word. The first thing that we must teach every new believer when they come to Christ, is how to walk in faith. Mm -hmm. The same faith that brought them salvation. Remember, we shared this with you, that you didn't just up and find Jesus. First of all, you didn't find him because he wasn't lost. Okay? <laughs> so you wasn't you finding him. He got a hold of you. And it was a work of faith that he gave you, watch this, so that you could even believe to receive him. See? Because that's why when you hear people say, again, when I get myself together, I'm going to really serve God. When I get myself together, I'm going to give my life to God. You'll never get yourself together. God has to give you faith. And what he does, he gives all of us faith, a measure of faith. Now, it's what you do with that faith. Some folk, like I say, they don't work their faith. So they sitting up here spiritually unemployed for the fifth year. We, you know, you started spiritually unemployed in 2023. Let's not wrap up 23, but you still spiritually unemployed. Put your faith to work. Come on, smile at anybody in your section that ain't frowning at you and say, put your faith to work. I'm just going to help you. It rains on the just and the unjust. Tests and trials are going to come. But it's not tests and trials that make you strong. If it was tests and trials that make us strong, we'd all be Hercules. It's faith in God's word. When you are going through whatever you're going through, that's what makes you strong. Mm -hmm. So we want to understand that because, beloved, we have been purposed through our faith to experience, as we've been sharing with you, immeasurable grace, 
immeasurable grace which uh, God willingly gives us through the Father, through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, again, change your definition. Change your definition. Faith is not merely God's unmerited favor. We always say that when you ask people, what does grace mean? God's unmerited favor. It's more than that. It's much more than that. Again, get the definition down in your spirit. Grace is all of God's ability and power, which he willingly wants to do through you, for you, and with you. I'm going to put it as best way as I can. God is not holding back. You just ain't stepping in. God is not divvying out his power. He's not divvying out his intervention into our lives. He just wants somebody, anybody who's willing to say, I believe God. And not just believe God, but then step on into it and work it out. See, you got to work it. You got to have to work it. You're going to have to take your faith and say, I'm going to just stand in faith. I'm going to believe what God says. I got a lot of things happening, but God has never failed me. See? Never failed me. I was telling the earlier celebration, you that have been in Sacramento a while, you don't know what I'm talking about, especially if you were in the military or your parents were in the military, I should say, or some of you in the military. But when I was a child... My dad and mother were both in the military stationed at McClellan. And we lived over in Del Paso Heights during that time and later into Foothill Farms. But my dad worked at McClellan and right across the street from where he worked, right off of uh, Myrtle and Watt Avenue, they had some offices that were off the main base, but it was still part of the base. And you could step out of his office. It was just a little, you remember those old green barracks looking buildings? They used to sit over there, and they had what they called back then a place called Toyland. And Toyland was the precursor of uh, Toys R Us for those of us that were in the military. Toyland was the place to be because they had everything. I mean, all kind of toys. It looked like on the inside like you were in the North Pole. I mean, they just had from ceiling, ceiling to floor, just toys everywhere. My parents would take us there, usually just before Christmas, and we'd walk around there, and y'all, we lost our minds. We lo it was overload because it was just so much. And they, many times, you know, they were cueing us. What would you like if you had an opportunity? And we said, we want this. And then we were like, Michael Jackson, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. <laughs> you know, we lost our minds. Now, and generally, generally, by Christmas time, we would see much of what we had asked for up under the tree. Some kind of way, God used my parents to get a message <laughs> to Santa Claus <laughs> so that we could... <laughs> Give what we wanted. <laughs> I'm talking to a mixed crowd today. You understand what I'm saying? So, and so you ought to just tell them that truth. Uh, God got a word to Santa Claus. And we would see what we liked under the tree. But here's the thing that got me. Here's the thing that got me. It amazed me that that was in December, November, December. But well into February, unbeknownst to me, March, unbeknownst to me, caught me off guard, even into April, I was walking out of my dad's office and come to find out that Toyland was not closed down. It was still open and still had toys and gifts and things all over the, whatever you wanted was in that place 365 days out the year, 24-7. Right. 
I, for the longest, only tapped into it in December. But oh, when I found out that they were open all the time, I was forever asking my parents, take me to Toyland so that I could get my gifts. Mm -hmm. Now, can I help y'all here? Some of y'all have treated grace and God's provision as all as though it's only available to you every now and then in a certain season in your life. But I got about a hundred of y'all that have recognized that no, 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 the goodness of God, the grace of God, the provision of God is available to me 24-7. Good times or bad times, all I gotta do is walk in it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just available to you because it's Sunday morning. It's not only just the God's grace is not just available to you because somebody laid hands on you. God's grace is available to you at all times. And what connects you to it is your faith. It's your faith. You saying, I step and I receive everything that God wants to do in my life. Don't turn there, but let me just have you write the verse down, if you will. In 1 John 1, 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. Let me read it to you in the Amplified. I like how it brings it out in the Amplified. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens. Can you tell somebody if God could sustain and create the heavens? Come on, look at him. Say, if God could create and sustain the heavens, God can handle what's going on with you. It says, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning, for he is perfect. And never changes. Even, did you catch this? Even when God is changing, or turning rather, when God is turning, he casts no shadow. That's how perfect he is. If I turn, there's a shadow. Because I am dependent upon an external light shining upon the substance to create illumination around me. So this external light is creating or casting this shadow. If I turn this way, there's a shadow. If I look behind me, there's a shadow. If I look to the right, there's a shadow that is, again, dependent upon an external light that is being cast and shining upon me. But not so with God, because God does not merely possess light, but because he is light. Because he is perfect in all his ways. Even when God turns, there is no shadow. Even when he shifts and moves, there is no shadow in his perfection. There is no shadow in his fullness. Now here's the good news. If you and I are in him and he is in us, then there's no place that a shadow can be cast upon us because he is our light. He is our revelation. I'm going to help you here today. I don't care how dark it seems to be around you once your faith connects to the living God who is the creator and the sustainer of life. I came to tell you that there is absolutely nothing that is impossible for him. The God we serve can speak to the things that are not as though they were. And I got about five of y'all that realize he is so good. He not only will do it, but he wants to do it. 
He wants to heal me. He wants to deliver me. He wants to pour into my life. You got to believe this. You got to know this, children. Change your narrative and start speaking and decreeing things not based on what you see, but based on what you know. Not what you feel, not what others think, but the fact that you have seen God be so faithful. You have watched God work before in your life. And even in your darkest moment, he's still able. Look what it says here in John 1, 17. Uh, 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 John 1, 9, excuse me. John 1, 9. It says, the true light, the true light, not the one who exudes light, or possesses light as though it's some type of characteristic of him, but he himself is light, the true light, which gives light to everyone. Not only is he the true light, but he gives us light. The true light, which gives life to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Now, you know that's a good God, to create the world, and then come in the world that he created. Not only did he create it, but he came into it. The world was made through him. Yet, the world did not know him. The world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Uh, that, that's not anything new to you. Some of you have got some folks that are supposed to be family and they don't know what to do with you. Especially when you begin to step forward in faith and step into the provisions of God and you're no longer dependent upon others. You come to a place where you can sit and say, if the Lord doesn't do it, it just can't be done. Because I found when family and friends, when you depend on them to back you up, many of them cannot handle the fact that God is blessing you the way that he is. And some type of way, jealousy and envy start setting in. That's why you can't have everybody sit and observe the blessings of God around you. Everybody can't come to your new house. Everybody can't come to your new little studio. Everybody cannot ride in your car. There's some folk that just have to watch from a distance and you not bring that spirit in. I'm in a whole nother message here. But you have to be careful because when God begins to bless you, hang around people who can appreciate what God is doing in your life. Hang around people that can celebrate what the Lord is doing in your life. You don't need any negative narratives around you. You don't need any folks rolling their eyes around you. You need somebody, if there's somebody sick, bring only people who are going to pray in faith. People are going to believe God. Don't come in here if you ain't got faith. If you don't believe God can heal me, you stay outside. But if you believe that there's nothing impossible for God, I need you to stand in agreement and pray with me and let's watch God work. Oh, bless his name. Come on, look at somebody. You got to be careful who's around you. Be careful who's around you. His own, his own, his own, his own. Ooh, I wish I could get off of that. But somebody's pulling me right there. Your own don't know how to receive you. Your own can't handle the fact that you're no longer codependent. Your own, they liked you better when you were strung out. They liked you better when you were hooked on that stuff. Glory to God. They, can, they, oh, you, you, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they liked you being dependent upon them. But now that you have found that God is living on the inside of you, 
I ain't got to ring your phone at one o'clock in the morning. I can talk to God for myself and know that he hears me. He walks with me and talks with me. Tells me I am his own. He came to his own. And his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him. Oh, I wish I could hear. To all who did receive him. Who believed in his name. The ones who said yes to God. Anybody say yes to God in here? To all who received him and believed in his name. Do you not know that there's still power in that name? Ah, oh, let me camp out here just a moment. Do you not know at the name of Jesus that it can begin to turn and shift what the adversary thought he was going to do when you say his name? See, some of you aren't using the name the right way. Some of y'all are sitting at there cussing in his name and using his name in vain. When you hit your thumb, you got the audacity to say Jesus, but that's not the way you use his name. You got to understand when you use his name, it causes devils to tremble. When you use his name, the angels of God begin to move. When you use that name, blood pressure, sickness and disease and cancer and diabetes and come on y'all every disease has to be subject to the name I don't know why I'm preaching like this but it has to be subject to the name of Jesus when you say his name you can walk into places that you don't even qualify to be at but the name of Jesus pushes the door open makes a way for you to walk in and step and see the blessings of God. Look at somebody say, say the name. Say the name. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? I feel an anointing in this house. Because when you call on the name of Jesus, sick bodies are healed. When you call on the name of Jesus, family members are saved. When you call on the name of Jesus, addictions are broken. Got to say his name. Say it the right way. Say it in faith believing. Glory to God. Look at somebody say, this is for your house. I'm calling on the name of Jesus. This is for your family. I'm calling on the name of Jesus. This is for your body. I'm calling on the name of Jesus. This is for your children and your children's children. I'm calling on the name of Jesus. For your business. I'm calling on the name of Jesus for your career. I'm calling on the name of I got to close. But to all who did receive him, anybody received him here? Anybody said yes to him? Anybody believed in his name? Yes. Well, look what he says. He gave the right to become the children of God. Yes. Look at somebody say, I have a right to be God's son or God's daughter. I have a right to stand in the provision of God. I have a right to look to the hills from where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. I have a right to bless the Lord at all times and his praise be in my mouth. I have a right. I have a right to cast out devils. I have a right to tell the enemy he's defeated. I have a right. See, see, some of y'all, y'all, my bishop, I just feel 
that's so arrogant. I think that's so arrogant, Bishop, that you would take the really believe, even to say that. He said it. I just say, I just said in the, I just don't know. I just don't know. I am making up my mind that I'm not going to live beneath what the Lord has designed for me. I've come too far. I know there's a whole lot of preachers that are trying to tell you it don't take all of that. They want you to be broke, busted, and disgusted. They want you to be sick and call that God's will. But I have a witness in this house. I called on Jesus and he answers prayer. I've seen God work. Tell anybody, tell somebody, I've seen God work. Look at me. I should have been dead. I should have been gone. I should have been strung out. But look at me. The Lord has come into my life. The Lord has delivered me. The Lord has set me free. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the best is yet to come. God's not finished. I said, God's not finished. Stop settling. Stop settling. Stop being religious. You walk by faith. It don't have nothing to do with you being Pentecostal, Baptist, Church of God in Christ. God wants some faith walkers. Tell anybody that's looking at you, say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith. Tell them your faith is about to open some doors. Your faith is about to give you some breakthrough. Say yes. Sit a sec, sit a sec. We gotta go. Sit, sit one sec. Let me, let me read this. Let me read this. Then we're gonna get, because I feel like running. I feel like running. Because y'all unstirred something up in here now. I feel like a breakthrough is up in here now. Now, I realize everybody can't handle this. Because you want three points in a poem. But some of us can't do three points in a poem this morning. We got too much that's going on. We need God to release his grace. So we can't do three points in a poem. I'm sorry I didn't give you the Christmas message that you thought you were going to get. But he ain't a baby no more. He went to the cross. He shed his blood. He hung his head. And he died. But he didn't stay dead on the third day. I feel my church coming up. On the third day, he got up with all power. Sit. Let me get this. I promise I will be nice. I'm going to read the text, and I'm going to sit. I promise you. I'm just going to read it and let it preach for itself. I'm going to, if you decide to shout, you can shout. If you decide to run, you can run. But I'm going to let it speak for itself. John 1.15 says this. John bore witness about Jesus and cried out, This is the one in whom I said, 
who has come after me. He ranks before me because he was before me. In the beginning, in other words, with the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. <laughs> Look what it says. For, notice here, here it is. For from his fullness. From his fullness. You don't have a half empty God. From his fullness. We have all received grace upon grace. From his fullness. Every time I tap into grace. He's got more grace for me. Right when I think I've exhausted his grace, he's got more grace for me. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, all the grace that you need today and all the grace you need for tomorrow is coming to you right now. And God ain't tapped out. God's got some mouth. God ain't tapped out. He's got some more grace. More grace. Say more grace. More grace. More power. More healing. More deliverance. Van Dyke. Run up here real quick, you and me. Run up here real quick. See, some of y'all play with this. You think that they go through all these calisthenics. They just go through all these calisthenics. Come here real quick. See, we're going to, they, they, they need to see what miracle look like. They need to see what miracle look like. Come on here. So, Alex come calling me the other day. He said, Bishop, we need you to pray. Because our oldest girl, baby girl, is in the hospital. Now, I like Alex because I could tell he'd been sitting under this teaching because he refused to say what they were saying, what the doctors were saying. He would only say, the doctors are acting like it ain't looking good for our daughter. And they keep telling us this. But he said, Bishop, I just believe that God can... <laughs> Baby girl was in ICU, went in this week, right? In ICU, still there now, but was in ICU, gave all the negative report. And I don't know how to pray except the prayer of faith. All I know is that God is a healer. All I know is that God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above whatever we ask or whatever we think. Alex told me the other day, yesterday, Bishop is looking good. Everything is beginning to turn. The able is looking good. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Everything is looking good concerning you. It's beginning to turn. Now don't just sit there. Put some praise on it. And I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to say this. Alex and Renee, God don't halfway do anything. I'm believing God for the fullness Thank God the lungs are clearing up. Thank God the bacteria. Wait now, don't, 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 don't. You, you really don't want us to go into the next service, right? He said, Bishop, we just got the word that the tubes are out right now. Don't.
down for the hip. Woo! Down for the hip, let's freeze him. Woo! Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Woo! Come on here! Come on here! Come on here! Come on here! We gotta go. My God! Now listen. 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 <laughs>